Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here. And as if I haven't planted enough shrubs already this year, I'm actually planting more. I mean, I have to say that I've really been inspired to uh, plant more shrubs because they're just so easy and so no brainery and there's a lot of bang for your buck. And I think shrubs are actually easier than just having nothing. So let me show you what I'm talking about and where we're planting. So this is the south side of our driveway. So out there is the driveway garden, which kind of screens this area from the road. And then we have this big blank space. And this is where we always have, um, you can see what's left of the mulch pile there. So when we have wood chips delivered, we usually have things dropped there. If we have other bulk materials, we have them dropped there. Um, I'd rather not look at that stuff, although sometimes there just is some of that. There's nowhere else for that to go. But I've often thought that having this area of grass here was kind of ridiculous. Um, now, I'm not sure that Mr. Much More Patient shares that opinion, but like, what's the point of having grass over here? We don't need it. We don't use it. And um, beyond this is all the neighbor's property. And this is their bulk storage too. So why would we want to look at any of that? So. We are gonna plant some shrubs here. Now this is a sort of a continuation of here is sort of the privacy screen that we've been talking quite a bit about. These are some uh, viburnums that have been here for a long time and they do a great job of screening things here. Um, and talk about easy care, we literally don't touch them in any way. Um, but then you get down here and I'm gradually gonna fill this area up. I think we will leave an area for bulk material delivery, but I may plant some more things um, back over here. But for now, we're just gonna focus on this area. Now we do have a couple of things in here already. So this is a Kodiak Black Deer Villa. Um, this was located over by where the new path is and I moved it and it's doing just fine over here. Um, it has showing no black whatsoever anymore, but it is flowering. This is the Forever Goldie. Now there's some junk over here, you're ignoring that. But this is the Forever Goldie that I grew in a container and then planted here. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say, it's not looking its best, but we are gonna keep babying that thing. And then back here I have um, three, actually four, bottle brush buckeyes. These things I planted a long time ago, they are taking forever to grow. Now bottle brush buckeyes, are fabulous, they get big and they sucker. And that's sort of what my hope is for this area is that eventually they'll just sort of fill in this area quite a bit. But they've been in the ground now for easily three years and this is as big as they are. So all the things I'm planting here would like some water, including those bottle brush buckeyes. And I think by turning this into a shrub border that will help quite a bit because the grass will go away. We'll be able to put down a nice layer of mulch and um, you know that will break down over time, add some bulk to the soil. I think it'll be overall a good change. But what I wanna focus on mostly today are the hydrangeas that I'm planting here. Now the first one is Haas Halo Hydrangea. Now um, I'm planting five hydrangeas of two different varieties here, and they are all native arborescence types, but they are lace cap arborescence types. So Haas Halo is a hydrangea I've really uh, come to love. I'm gonna say right now, it's currently my favorite hydrangea. This is a moving target though. And uh, I actually moved to Incredibles in order to plant other Haas uh, hydrangeas. So these will be my, I think I've got three Haas halos right now. Let me just give you the stats on this guy first. Okay, zone four. Well, I already down to zone four. They're not giving me an upper range. I'm gonna guess it's eight, maybe. Exposure, they say part shade. Uh, if you're up north, you can push that into sun with really no problem. And um, well-drained soil and three to five tall and five to seven wide. Slow growers though, these do not grow as fast in my experience as um, some other hydrangeas. What I love about these is the lace cap flower and I'll show you some that I have blooming right now that are relatively new. Um, but these were rated by the Mount Cuba Center. They rated Haas Halo the best native arborescence type hydrangea. Um, so I think hopefully it's gonna gain in some popularity, be a little bit easier to find. Now let me show you the other one that I'm gonna plant as well. Um, this is called Pinky Pollen Ring Smooth Hydrangea. I had not heard of this one. When I asked my local nursery if they could order in some Haas Halos for me, they also got this one and it's kind of very similar, but uh, in pink. 
Again, native hydrangea, very hardy, lace cat flowers. And this is four to five feet tall and four to five feet wide. So these are gonna get some size. I have no idea about the growth rate on this one at all. So we're gonna put one of those pinky pollens here, one over there. I am trying to actually space these properly. And then three Haas halos uh, kind of along the front here. So I broke the cardinal rule of bringing plants home from a nursery and put them out here and didn't spray them with deer spray. And it is a terrible time of year to do that because the fawns are out. And fawns will test anything, eat anything, try anything. Um, not that they wouldn't have eaten this anyways, but we got a, quite a bit of deer damage on a few of these. So let me just show you quick. So you can see that this one uh, really, they ate the whole top of it basically, but all is not lost at all. Now, of course we're gonna lose probably not get flowers on those but look already we've got new growth starting so they just it wasn't that they ate it it's just that they pruned it so all i'm gonna do is just neaten up the stems where they've where they've been taste testing and these have been sprayed by the way now i'm just going to neaten up these stems and you see that nice new growth will come out and i think very soon you won't even be able to tell that these got shall we say nibbled on anyway let that be a lesson spray your stuff if you have deer spray your stuff as soon as it comes home from the nursery the other plants i have back here are actually sort of leftovers from the privacy screen project and this is berry heavy gold uh winter berry here i've got three of them and a mr poppins i believe that's mr poppins back there and the other three are the three that will get the beautiful berries I had bought these for the screening project. They were too big for over there. I think they'll be just fine over here. There's space for them to be over here and do their thing. I mean, one of the things you don't want to do when you plant something like this is have to worry about pruning it. Just let it let it do its thing. So everything I mentioned so far is a native plant, which is including the bottle brushes, which is fabulous. I mean, I think that's just great. Uh, these three boxwood, these are three more of the better boxwood skylights. Um, which I think will provide nice little structure here. And those are not native. But everything else here is native and has room to grow. So here's how I'm gonna plant these. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of a shortcut here and I am only gonna cut a hole in the grass and plant the shrub inside that. And then later I will come back and probably do some sheet mulching, cardboard mulch between the plants and then mulch on top of that um, because I just do not have the time or interest to remove sod or kill sod here. And I think there's nothing wrong with that method at all. It's just that, you know, it might look a little odd to be planting sort of a shrub planting and be doing it in the middle of grass. Cause obviously we're not, there's not gonna be enough space between these to actually mow between these. So obviously all those things need to happen fairly quickly. Okay, I am going to get going on this and um, I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna finish this today, but we will catch up when they are in the ground. This is one of two Haas halos that I planted earlier this year. I bought them in quite big containers, like three gallon containers. They were quite large, but you can see their flowering. The size of the flowers, I mean, especially even on newly planted plants, it's, it's huge. It's a, I mean, I would say this is probably I don't know, seven inches across probably, but you can see the form of the flowers, which is all these um, fertile uh, florets here, and that's what pollinators will go after. And then uh, this has, uh, these are infertile. Looks pretty good with the clematis right there too. And this is one that I planted from a one gallon container probably three years ago now. I find Haas Halo to be, um, slightly slower growing than other hydrangeas. Uh, so it's just, this is the first year it's had some actual size to it. The florets on this one are, uh, there are more of them, but they are a bit smaller at this point at least. And as long as we're talking about native hydrangeas, I should just briefly mention the queen of all of them, which is Annabelle hydrangea. And that's the one that you're seeing here. It is, defying all odds and staying upright. And of course, that's the big argument against uh, Annabelle hydrangea. But uh, I imagine if we got a heavy rain, now that there are flowers on it, we could see some flopping. But actually considering the year we've had, it's looking 
uh, pretty good. And these flowers are just starting to open. You can see they still have this sort of lime green color on them, but these will not be of nearly as much value to pollinators as the lace cap varieties. Okay, so here is this area planted. Uh, it doesn't look a lot different from how it looked when we had things in the container. We did have to rearrange a couple of the winter berries because we ran into roots, of course. And we will come back here, like behind here is all uh, wild raspberry. We just need to prune those, I just prune those out. So this is basically the property line right here. So we will just clear out all the weedy material that's on our side of the property here and maybe go a little bit further. They certainly won't mind. Um, just to clear that up but eventually that winter berry will create a nice screen there as well i think this will look far more impactful once things actually grow of course and once we mulch this area rather than rather than uh just have grass here because it kind of looks a little i think a little odd but i think everything is way happier in the ground than it was in pots i've managed to continue to keep the deer off and a couple of days later because i am a couple of days after i started this here is how that continued new growth goes where um, that growth was coming out where the deer had nipped that so like i said these will get new new leaves i don't expect to see flowers where they've nipped off though so of course there is no shortage of hydrangeas out there on the market to choose from but if you're looking for something a little different if you're looking for something that is a native plant if you're trying to increase that proportion of native plants that you have uh, in your garden these might be some to consider for you they're certainly going to be um, excellent performers although honestly most hydrangeas uh, that are in this arborescence category are really good performers uh, personally i have tired just a touch of the huge flowers that's actually why i moved the incredibles away from the steps uh, and replaced it with those Haas halos. I'm just this is just the mood I'm in right now. I'm just appreciating a slightly subtler look because there is nothing subtle about an incredible hydrangea. Um, so that's why I wanted to um, just play around with that. And these I think will be very pretty over here. Now I will say, okay, so obviously deer are gonna be an issue I'm gonna have to just be on top of over here. Um, I've done videos before about how I manage deer. For the most part, it's with deer spraying, deer repellent regularly and spraying everything, not just the plants that the deer are interested in eating so that everything in this yard smells bad to them and tastes bad to them. Um, I will say that like this time of year when the fawns are out, I'm actually spraying deer repellent about once every seven days. Um, usually I would be 10 to 14 days. Uh, by the way, most deer repellents are uh, rainproof, so you don't have to reapply every time it rains if you're using a commercial deer repellent. Uh, most of them will manage that just fine. What they don't manage is new growth. So only the plant material that you have sprayed is actually protected by a deer repellent unless they're turned off just by the scent of it. So if you have plants putting out a lot of new growth, they will go after that new growth whether you've even if you've sprayed the rest of the plant sometimes. So I don't actually reapply just because it's rained. I reapply once because it's one because it's easier for me to be on a schedule and right now the fawns are very um, fawns are indiscriminate testers. They, it's, everything is new to them. They want to try it all. So even if no other deer is eating it, a fawn will taste test something and the fawns are out in force right now. So um, that is the main reason why I keep up on it right now. Also, um, there's a, still a lot of growth happening here. So uh, we actually haven't had any rain to speak of whatsoever. So most of the water is coming from sprinklers, etc. I do not reapply just because I've uh, applied water to an area or it has rained. Okay. Uh, and the thing is, is that the nice thing about these is these bloom on new wood. So if we have deer brows in winter, which I can say uh, is pretty much absolutely assured, it's no big deal because they bloom on new wood. Okay, there's some new hydrangeas for you to think about uh, and sort of the start of another shrubby area, although not extensive, and, uh, and to be added on when I feel like it or when I find a cool shrub, I feel like adding. But it's a much better use of this area over here than just growing bad grass. What's the point of that? All right, have a great day in your garden. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.